Please stand, everyone, for our opening collect. Let us pray together the collect for Catherine of Alexandria found on the front of the program. Almighty and everlasting God, who kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your holy martyr, Catherine of Alexandria, grant to us, your humble servants, a like faith and power of love, that we who rejoice in her triumph may profit by her example. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. St. Catherine is the patron saint of Christian schools. Her story is a combination of legend and some historic fact. You see a bust, a bishop and historian who in 320 CE wrote the first history of the church, mentions Catherine's youthfulness and noble character. Crusaders returning from war by way of seaport at Alexandria brought popular stories of Catherine back to Europe. Her story is a simple but inspiring one. Catherine lived around 300 CE in the famous city of Alexandria, Egypt. The city, besides being a seaport, was a famous intellectual center and was proud of its world-famous library. Catherine was a young scholar. With the support of her family, she was afforded a superior education. Catherine was converted to the Christian faith in her late teenage years. She attracted the t attention of Maximian, a Roman military general, who later shared the emperorship of Rome, Diocletian. Maximian wanted to marry Catherine. He was, however, opposed to the Christian faith, believing that it caused the ancient gods of Rome to curse the success of the empire. Maximian insisted that Catherine renounce her faith and revert to the religion of her parents. In time, because she would neither marry him nor renounce her faith, he tried to convert her through intellectual challenge and debate. To Maximian's embarrassment, Catherine was successful in defending the Christian faith before 50 or more non-Christian scholars. Later, in an attempt to revitalize the Roman Empire, emperors Diocletian and Maximian 
initiated a wave of Christian persecution. It was in Alexandria that the wave of persecution was notably worse. The death penalty was revived for Christians in 304 CE. Catherine was among those who, who those drawn to the emperor's last effort to force Christians to denounce their faith. Catherine refused to give up her faith so she was nailed with spikes to a cartwheel and rolled through the cobblestone streets of Alexandria. She died a short time later when she was beheaded with a sword. Because she refused to give up her faith in Jesus Christ for any reason, she is known as a saint today. This book symbolizes the virtue of knowledge. St. Catherine knew the importance of education and scholarship. She also knew that education alone was not enough, but that it needed to be combined with wise judgment if it were to be put to good use. St. Catherine used her knowledge to do God's work when she defended her faith before an assembly of learned philosophers. This ring symbolizes the virtue of faith. St. Catherine lived a life of faith in God and God alone. Her faith was so strong that she would not give it up for any reason, not for marriage, not for prestige, not for her life itself. The source of her faith was the God she loved more than anything else. This wheel symbolizes the virtue of courage. St. Catherine lived at a time when Christianity was considered a threat to the Roman nation. It took courage for St. Catherine to be a Christian when the world opposed her. St. Catherine's courage was so great that she was able to face even the torture of being nailed to a wheel and rolled through the streets of the city. This palm symbolizes the virtue of determination. When an army returned home victorious from battle, the people welcomed them by shouting for joy and waving palm branches. St. Catherine won a great victory by holding on to her faith in Christ against all odds. Her determination helped her not only to win the victory of resisting the pressures to conform, but also to confront the world with the love of God. This crown symbolizes the virtue of hope. The crown which the church has given to St. Catherine shows that even in the face of suffering and death, she always had hope that God would bring good out of her life. Her hope was the assurance that God's will would be done and it allowed her to die in peace, a true martyr. And now I invite you to stand for the collect for all saints. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God 
in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. And now, as throughout the church in this season of All Saints, we rehearse the names of community members whom we have known to have died in the year past. Encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we give thanks for our place with them in the communion of saints, the cloud of witnesses. From the class of 1936, Emery Gill Williams. From the class of 1939, Barbara Kirkland Childs. Elizabeth Faulkner Massey. From the class of 1941, Dabney Rawlings Holloway. From the class of 1942, Rowena Kirby Smith Coleman Brown. Francis Fisher Merwin. Anne Hughes Preston. Margaret Gentry Yingling. From the class of 1943, Anne Moore Parrish. From the class of 1944, Barbara Evans Davis. From the class of 1945, Mary Josephine Preston Bruce. Nilla Darmond Buckley. Emily Everett Carter. Joan Wishart Moody. From the class of 1946, Alice Blaney Holmes. Cabell Brown Rome. Sally Wharton von Solkema. Elizabeth Lochran Whitehill. From the class of 1947, Anne Jones Dan. Alan Carter Rowleader Giltonen. Barbara Rich Jackson. Marjorie Bunce Monroe. Nancy Giles Payne. From the class of 1948, Joan Poston Barton. Anne Cowden Bream. Jane Cuman Abert Cecil. Barbary Gail Henderson. Elizabeth Ray Herbert Hessler. Anna Noldy McKinney. Jane Thompson Roebuck. From the class of 1950, Elia Desports Brown. Catherine Smith Flower. Marion Yantis Schmidt. From the class of 1951, Martha Munson Pollard. Sarah Liggett Smith. From the class of 1952, Elise Power Quimby. From the class of 1953, Nancy Brogdon Booker. Margaret Graves Butterworth. Dorothy Smith Horan. From the class of 1954, Jane Johnson Hunter. From the class of 1955, Susan Bird Blanchard. From the class of 1956, Elizabeth Rains Grinds. Catherine Ward Leisure. Ashby Dunn Scott. From the class of 1957, Julia Howard Grimstad. Carolyn Christison Manley. From the class of 1960, Jean Cawthorn Ely. Melissa Lee Evans. Terry Davick Rowe. From the class of 1961, Emily Bryan Jeffries. Nancy Temple Samuels. Cordelia Selden Steinecker. From the class of 1962, Cordelia Harrison Ward. From the class of 1963, Laura Duval Chase. From the class of 1964,
Carter, Blackford, Filer, Lankford. From the class of 1966, Mary Teresa White Gottrow, Hildreth McCray Wheeler. From the class of 1968, Marianne Wood Hastings. From the class of 1970, Elizabeth Marshall Hillsman. From the class of 1973, Tian Mitchell Gordon. From the class of 1977, Olivia Hayes Emmerman. Julie Wellman Maddox. From the class of 1979, Kathy Clash Coleman. Judith Witcher Motley. From the class of 1985, Natalie Fraser Perry. Former members of the Board of Governors, Bruce C. Gottwald, Jr. Lewis Clifford Schroeder. Former faculty and staff, Robert L. Jacobs, Stephen Taylor. So a very warm welcome to our annual St. Catherine's Day celebration. This is always a happy occasion when we gather together as the St. Catherine's family to commemorate the founding of our school by Virginia Randolph Ellett, fondly known as Miss Jenny. It brings me great joy to warmly welcome, if virtually, all our honored guests who join us today, 
who in their senior year were elected by their classmates and faculty to bring St. Catherine's message to the school. We take this time every year to share the story of Catherine of Alexandria, our patron saint. You heard her story, told by our middle school girls, a story we repeat every year. Not only is it a tradition, but it is also important that we remember her life each year and the virtues she exemplified. This gives us the opportunity to reflect on our own lives and on how we demonstrate those virtues in our actions. And just like all of you who are gathered here together, Catherine of Alexandria was a brave young woman who stood strong in her convictions. I challenge all of us to reflect on our own beliefs and to stay true to our own values, just as St. Catherine did so many centuries before. In St. Catherine's honor, this service also recognizes one senior who, by the vote of her classmates and faculty, best represents the ideals of Catherine of Alexandria. Commitment to scholarship, determination, courage, hope, and faith. I will introduce this year's senior in a moment, and then we will all have the pleasure of hearing from her. As a reminder, this service is held on or close to All Saints Day in order to give us the opportunity, as we have just done, to honor and remember the lives of those from our St. Catherine's family who passed away in the last year. We remember them fondly for the many ways they enriched our lives and supported this school. The tradition of St. Catherine's Day goes back to 1924, when the junior class, along with our founder, Virginia Randolph Ellett, wrote a play portraying the life of Catherine of Alexandria, whom Miss Jenny selected to be our patron saint. St. Catherine's Day first took on the form of an elaborate pageant, but later was simplified to focus on St. Catherine's life and virtues. Before I introduce this year's special senior honoree, I would like to extend my thanks to the clergy and staff of St. Christopher's for their hospitality in hosting us today in this beautiful chapel. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce this year's St. Catherine's Day honoree. This young woman who we celebrate today represents the best of who we are. Our honoree began her journey at St. Catherine's in kindergarten. At St. Catherine's, she was described as a happy little girl who enjoys school very much. Throughout lower school, her teachers praised her maturity, attention to her schoolwork, and sense of responsibility. More specifically, her kindergarten teacher noted, she was a great help in keeping our room neat and clean. A role model for other students, even in those early days, she was known for her participation in class discussions and projects and for enjoying working and playing with her classmates. As if foretelling the future, her second grade teacher stated that she is, quote, a St. Catherine's girl through and through. In middle school, our honoree was the recipient of three merit awards that show her continued growth as a scholar and a person of character. One of her middle school classmates noted, quote, she is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, and she always thinks of others before herself. Other students love to be partnered with her because she is a hard worker who, quote, makes a point to include people who may not have been included otherwise. Mrs. Baldwin, then director of the middle school, rightly pointed out that our honoree was also, quote, never afraid to be herself. During her time as an upper school student, our honoree continued to excel in academics, athletics, and leadership. Her college counselor noted that she, because she is unfailingly unassuming, kind, and poised, she, quote, inspires others to be better people, and, quote, finds joy in celebrating other people's victories. In short, she leads by example. Her outstanding academic record boasts a highly challenging course load and exceptional grades. She has served as a peer advisor, but is probably best known to the rest of you for her athletic prowess. She garnered LIS, all metro, and all state accolades in field hockey, track, and lacrosse. For her skill as a runner in track, as a midfielder in field hockey, and as a goalie in lacrosse. 
I'm sure most of the seniors here have already figured out who this is, but to make it official, it is my great pleasure to announce that Mary Eleanor Ellie Horner is our 2020 St. Catharines honoree. I just want to say thank you to the school for letting us have this ceremony. Um, we're all very appreciative of what you've done for us this school year. So there is this idea in sports that if you practice with someone enough times, you'll start to play like them. Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy have the same form when they shoot their three-pointers. Like them, people say that Claire and I have the same, quote, prance when we run. After all of the sprints and drills, and after you play with someone enough, you start to copy their movements and tendencies. This holds true now. While I am standing here in front of you today, it is really only because of the constant kindness and care that I see each one of you exhibit here at school. While I am standing here, I am only reflecting the traits I see in you. Each day, I try to display the same happiness, love, and support that you all selflessly give to others. You are amazing people, and like how an athlete mirrors someone else, I've tried to mirror you. Receiving the news that I was a St. Catherine's Day honoree was the sneakiest meeting I've experienced at St. Catherine's. Mrs. C emailed me to come meet, her, meet with her about my college application. Sly, very sly. Before I knew it, Dr. Wolf appeared, closed the blinds, and greeted me with her famous words, don't worry, you're not in trouble. I was informed I would be the St. Catherine's Day honoree and experienced the same kind of feeling you have in a dream where you can't run, except I couldn't find the words to speak. I eventually responded by asking where I could find a fork, as I had forgotten one that day for lunch. My first instinct after leaving the meeting was to tell my twin sister, Claire. I texted Claire to meet me in the bathroom of the Bacote basement with instructions to, quote, be discreet. I told her she started to cry. Her sobs sounded like a wounded walrus. And as we stood there in the bathroom, as I watched her cry, I couldn't help thinking to myself, how amazing is it that I have this person in my life, that I have this person who I spend 20 hours a day with, that I share a room with and have shared a womb with, and who cares for me, supports me, and inspires me beyond any measurable length. I looked at our reflections in the mirror. And as I watched Claire swim like Alice in a pool of her own tears, and as I watched her show support that I hope I will one day be able to display, I realized that I didn't want to talk about myself during this speech, but about all of, but about all of your qualities that I've tried to mirror. And not just your qualities, but specifically the values of Catherine of Alexandria that you naturally display every day. Hope, courage, knowledge, determination, and faith. The early learners and lower schoolers have taught me hope. Their positive energy is nothing but contagious, and I can't help smiling as I see them radiating happiness each day on the playground as they see their friends or as they approach learning with an ecstatic eagerness. I have tried to reflect this positivity, and with positivity comes hope. When you water your mind with optimism, optimism grows, and with optimism comes the hope for a good day. I have tried to reflect the courage that middle schoolers display. Middle school, the time when you are first introduced to stress, when you no longer have recess, and when most people have braces. To say the least, it is not a time most people want to relive. And because of that, I admire the middle schoolers I see every day around the green, on the Washington patio, or exiting the Kinney Center. Middle school is a time when you first start to find your passions, and it takes courage to try new things. I admire those who, with bravery, audition for Joni or Ampersand who try out for strings, who try out for a sports team, whether it be field hockey, basketball, or lacrosse. Middle school, your courage is commendable, and I thank you for showing me how to be brave. To my upper schoolers, you all hold the knowledge I hope to attain and the determination I hope to exhibit. While I admire the intelligence of the Albert Einsteins of our generation, cough, cough, Amelia and Catherine, and of the future Beethovens, Lilibet, I'm looking at you, 
I also admire the knowledge people possess that is not related to academics and the determination you exhibit towards displaying this type of smarts. The knowledge of simply how to be a good classmate, a good friend, and a good member of the St. Catharines community. My Chinese class, five years going strong, led by the fearless Mrs. Zhu, has taught me how to be a good classmate. When a student answers a challenging question correctly, the class bursts into applause, sometimes even chanting, quote, Chinese scholar, followed by a series of claps. This support has taught me that being a good student should come second to being a good person, always, and I should support and be happy for any other student's successes. I have learned how to be a caring member to the community by watching people hold doors for one another, by watching teachers make fudge for their classes during winter exams, and by watching upperclassmen help underclassmen find their way around Turner or Armfield, and so much more. And I've learned how to be a good friend by watching your kindness towards one another. No I told you so's or arrogant remarks when a friend makes a mistake, just pure kindness. I couldn't just fill a novel about the kindness I witnessed each day. I could write a series as long as the Harry Potter heptology. The St. Catharines community as a whole has taught me faith. Faith in the goodness of our community, in the strength of our relationships. I wonder what St. Catherine of Alexandria would be like if she were here today. Would she be wearing an athleta mask, driving a forerunner, or walking around with an iced coffee from Starbucks? Would she be a starting forward on the field hockey team, or a leader of the student council with Isabel? Maybe she would be a member of PAC, or an editor of the Atelier. She could be any variation of things, but I know that she would be proud of what St. Catharines has become of who you all have become. She would be proud of how her values, hope, courage, knowledge, determination, and faith prominently live here in the St. Catharines community. I want to close with an E.E. E. Cummings quote my mom loves. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. I've been thinking about that quote often over the past few days. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. Because of all of you and the relationships and experiences I've had with you, I feel like my heart is one big puzzle made up of a million pieces of all of the things you have taught me. Like an athlete mirrors another athlete, my heart is made up of all of your qualities that I try to mirror. There is a piece for your support, for your kindness, and so much more. You all have made me a better person. I admire each and every one of you for the unique perspective and qualities you contribute to the St. Catharines community. But remember, while I am standing here today, it is because you have built the heart that guides my actions. I have tried to mirror you. Thank you.
Please stand for the prayers. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For the brave and the courageous, who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you, Lord. For the communion, communion of saints in all times and places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together our school prayer and benediction. Help us, O God to remember, through the example of Jesus Christ, that what we keep we lose, only what we give remains our own. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, be near us to defend us, within us to possess us, around us to preserve us, before us to guide us, behind us to justify us, and above us to bless us. Amen. Let us go forth into the world to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated now for our postlude. We are 